Welcome to segment two, Inside the Business of Acting with Kate Linder, a, a just wonderful fixture on the long-running CBS daytime drama, The Young and the Restless. You're actually a little above the young. Oh, I call young, it The Young and the Rest of Us. Me and the rest of us. Oh, I like that, oh, I like that <laughs> yeah. very much. We are talking about all things that are inside the business of acting and about Kate's career journey and so many interesting turning points. And, and thank you for for being uh, back with us. It's a lovely career you're having. Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I love it. This is, you have to remember, Brad, that this is, this is all I've ever wanted. When I was a little girl, when you ask little girls what they want to be, you know, they'll say mothers, they'll say flight, at, flight attendants, they'll say all we'll these things. That, right? Right? We're going to get they'll to that. They'll say nurses, they'll say all these things. But I always wanted to be an actress, and that's all I wanted to be. And there wasn't anyone in my family that was in the business, so it's been, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't anybody to help me. I, I didn't, you know, there was a lot of trial and error. I still feel like it's trial and error. Well, but I think isn't that yeah. wonderful that, that, that even now on the career journey, there are always lessons learned on the oh, way. Oh, absolutely. You know, so There's so much to learn. You study theater arts in college, right? Majored in yes, theater. Yes, that's San, my San degree. Francisco San Francisco State. State. Yeah, that's a great school. They have a wonderful theater arts department there. They do. And, uh, and they had a film department as well at that time, but that was a long time ago, and I, I think it's, it's more developed now than it was then. Yeah. They have a great reputation. Yeah. They have some great professors yeah, up there. They do. But still, you don't, you know, you think you're going to get out of college. I think so many people think that. You think, well, I, I have a degree. Well, that, and, well, I guess it's more than, maybe it's $2 now. We'll maybe. buy you a cup right, of right. coffee, right? That's interesting because I tell my students that at Emerson College all the time. See, we always talk about, okay, so now, you know, you're studying, you're working on this degree, and so you're going to get your, you will actually get your degree on this day. Well, what happens the next day? You know, and we, there's this, um, in many circles, a, a rampant sort of generational entitlement that says, I have my degree, so now I'm, hire right. me. I'm ready to be hired, when in fact... Well, there's so they, many things to know. Yeah. I mean, it's not just about learning how to act. It's it's the business it's stuff. It's totally the business. That's why they call it show business, the business of show, and it is a business. But you have to, you have to be in the unions, uh, SAG, AFTRA, equity. There's a lot of things, and you have to figure out how, how to do that. And it's a, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. It's a circle because you, they won't hire you unless you're a member of AFTRA or SAG, right. and you can't right. get to be that unless you work. So you ha right. it's, it's a lot to figure out. And it's also strategic about when they end up in the unions, because I, I do want kids to be able to do a lot of non-union stuff in the beginning to kind of build the resume and, and, and get rid of some of the green mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. on a set. Absolutely. But there are ways to do that. Uh, I know AFI, they have a program where you can uh, do some of their their projects too and work on there you know so there's all kinds of different ways you are one of the most popular characters Aww, on the young and the restless yeah. well you are the fans l love you and, but i also uh from the business side of me i go why i like so admire how you stay in touch you have a real fan protocol that works i mean y you really uh, make a proactive effort to be f fan conscious, well, don't you? Well, you have to remember, if it weren't for the fans and for the viewers of our show, I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't be here talking to you. I wouldn't be doing anything. They're extremely important. So, The letters, I, the, 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 the viewers, the fans, yeah. the letters, having contact with your fans. Or I watched, you know, I watched too before I even uh, was in this position. Because there are certain celebrities that I really admire and I really love. And I watched some of them and how they treated their fans. And I was appalled. And I thought, my gosh, they're the reason you're there. They're the reason you're working. And I made a conscious decision that that would never happen to me. Mm. And I've always, uh, if I, you know what? It's just not only my duty or my responsibility, but it's my right, it's my privilege to give back. And I try to do that as much as I can. Like, for instance, I received a letter uh, at one time from, from, a, from a person, and she said, you know, my sister's really sick. She loves 
you on the show, you know, uh, it's her birthday. Would you mind sending her a picture? Yeah. Well, by the time I got the letter, it takes a while for the mail to get in and go out and all that kind yeah. of thing. I thought, oh, my gosh, this is never going to make it. And I remember she lived in Smith City, Kansas. So I thought, well, I'm going to take a chance. So I called information. I got her number. Wow. I called her. And I said, uh, I said, hi, this is Esther, because, you know, from the Young and the Restless. Because I thought if I said Kate Linder, this was a long time ago. I said, mm -hmm. Kate Linder, she's not going to know who that is. So I said, hi, uh, this is Esther from the Young and the Restless. I want to wish you a happy birthday. And she said, oh, my gosh. Well, she said, you know, I'm really ill. And I said, I know. And we talked. And we talked for a long time. Well, after that, her sister wrote me a letter. And she said her white cat, I mean, the, the doctor, it was a miracle. She got better. And, mm. and she did eventually pass away. But for years, I was in contact with the family. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if I can give back or make someone feel good for one second, you know, how fortunate for me that I'm able to do that. And I've tried. I'm celebrity spokesperson for the ALS, ALS Association, yes, I know. Uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. I yeah. do a lot of charity. I, oh, I'm active with Make-A-Wish Foundation, a lot of the AIDS yeah. organizations. And but but the, the actors on the daytime dramas have in general, a very special relationship with their fans. The fans have always typically felt very connected and very involved with those shows. Well, absolutely. You know, and you know why? Because we're in their living room every day, and we become part of the family. As opposed to a nighttime actor or a film actor, mm -hmm. they will be more reticent to go up to them. But for us, they feel like they know us because they see us every day. And I've had people come up to me and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, do I know this person? And I don't, you know, have I met this person before? Or, but I, I always like it when people come up to me, no matter where I am. I, I'm just, I'm, I love it. I love to hear what they say mm -hmm. about the show. And, and I like the fact that they're enjoying it and, and I'm able to give back to them. Well, then that's part of your proactive nature is to, you know, kind of make those connections too, which I think, you know, I think works enormously. So there's a part of you that's also very fiscally responsible in that an actor can't always make a living, especially in the beginning, just by acting, right? So is it, I know what the bio says. But this just me. This, okay. They're not. It's just us. Okay. So really, do you, you were working for United Airlines, and do you still work for United? Yeah, Airlines? I'm still a flight attendant for United. Just, no, come seriously. I'm the serious. Truth. Really? I still fly. Uh, I basically do the show during the week and yeah. fly on weekends, and then I trade things around if I have events to do on that weekend. Um, you know, sometimes I'll drop my trips or I'll fly, like maybe to Seattle and back, and then I can still get home in time to do an event that night. And I do do that. Um, you and, like it? Well, you know what? In the, it, it's interesting because it's changed as well. But in the beginning, no one on the show knew that I was flying because I was afraid that they wouldn't take me seriously as an actress if they knew I was a flight attendant. So I kept that secret. And one day, I was on the airplane. And they were deadheading me, which means they're taking me from point A to point B, right? And I was in regular clothes. I wasn't in my uniform. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm on upstairs on the 47, and who walks upstairs but Jean Cooper, who plays my boss, right, Mrs. Chandler? Yeah. And where is her seat? Right next to mine. <laughs> so she goes, oh, okay, you know, what are you doing? You know, I don't know. Are you doing a personal appearance? Because we were in Denver, I think. Well, I couldn't lie to her, so I no. told her the truth. And she thought, of course, she thought it was fabulous. And then, you know, by, after that, it got out, and it, it was, but by that time, I'd already been on the show for a few years, and so they thought it was great. So it was, it was fine. It was fine by that. And I just thought, you know, this is something. I'm, I, you, you know what, Brad? It's really interesting, because one day I'm on the set. The next day I'm here with you. The day after, I'm serving coffee at 35,000 feet. And you can't, you can't forget who you are that way. No, you you know, you, you remember who you are. And as long as I can do both jobs well, then I will continue to do them. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, Young and the Restless is my primary job and it's my concern. But I will, I, you know, I do them the best that I can. And I get to see the viewers. I've had great stories yeah. that happened on the airplane. Well, there's going to be a lot of double takes going well, on. Oh, you know. <laughs> gosh. There was this 
it was really funny because this one couple got on and this woman said, oh my gosh, you know, you're Esther on Young and the Restless. And the husband pulled me aside and he said, I'll pay you 50, 50 bucks if you say it isn't you. I said, what do you mean? He said, because I bet her $100, there's no <laughs> way that's going to be you. And, uh, and I said, well, hey, you're only paying me 50 so that's it. No, you it's see? me. <laughs> <laughs> you know Marla Gibbs, from, who was oh, on the Jefferson. Yes. She was a, 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 a reservationist for And you United. know what? Marla told me, too. She said, you know what? You're doing the right thing. Don't quit. She said, I wish I hadn't quit. She said, I made a mistake. Well, she told yeah. me that. And it only lasted with her. She left United, I think, the first season yeah. of The Jeffersons. I think the producers, it, w it went something like, Are you, you want to be on the show, we'll make you a regular. And she decided, well, I better take both feet with me. I mean, it's a really interesting story. Yeah. Like yours. Yeah. And then those travel benefits are okay. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. changed. You know, like everything. And the business has changed, and that's changed. But yes, it, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's interesting you, who knows what's going on in this world anymore? We all know it's kind of crazy. And, Unpredictable. And you can't yeah. predict anything. And so I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm really great. I try to keep all my options open. Um, I, I'm a very loyal person. I stay with everybody forever. Mm -hmm. I've had my uh, publicist. Who, Brenda, Brenda. How long have you and Brenda Feldman Oh, She is the absolute he, uh, best. 20 with her uh, well, over years. Uh, 23 years. Yeah. yeah. So she's amazing. She's really great. My manager, mm -hmm. Sandra Siegel, is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I've been with her for years and years and years. She was my agent. Actually, she is the one that got me, uh, did my first contract on The Young and the Russells. So, yeah. So I've been it's with nice. her for a really long time. That kind of loyalty is really... And really nice. I want us all to grow, and it's good as yeah. being like as a team, and it's important to me that we yeah. all grow together. Well, sure, but you know, sort of most of the actors we know, they sort of reach a certain level, and they go, "Well, I'm too big for you. I'm going to go to the big guys, the big agency." You know that that uh, I have great respect for that kind of loyalty. I well, think I, I just think it's important, and we can all do this together. And I've also seen. A lot of people that start believing their own press, yeah. and then you don't. Where are they? Right, then I've seen go, a, Give me that back. I've seen a lot of people come yeah. and go, and uh, no, that's mm. that's okay. <laughs> I, I I didn't mean to lie. I didn't mean to lie. I I had full intentions of talking about the Hollywood Walk of Fame oh, in this yes. segment. But will you stay one more? Of course, because we have to talk want? about the Hollywood w w Walk of Fame, and I have some business of acting, some other kinds of things I want to chat with you about that will help th them in, in their journey. So you, okay. right? This, yeah. th and the flight's delayed anyway, so. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Kate Linder is here. We are inside the business of acting. I'm Brad Lamack in Los Angeles, and we're coming back.